If you were to take a trip down the Arkansas River, through Canyon and further east through Florence, Colorado, on past the cement plant, if you look over at the right time, you might see the ghosts of concrete. Concrete, Colorado was a bustling town just a century ago. The U.S. Portland Concrete Company had been founded in 1898, and within 20 years, two large competing plants were built along the banks of the Arkansas River. The U.S. Portland plant would build its own company town, so its employees would have a place to live near work. The new homes were built of, you guessed it, concrete. They were solid structures built to last. The town boasted of schools and shops and clinics. Adolph Coors of beer fame was the company's president at one time, but U.S. Portland cement wasn't the only game in town. Just up the old Highway 6 from the plant, another company was in full swing as well. The Colorado Portland Cement Company was processing the natural limestone found on the banks of the Arkansas into cement as well, and they were huge competitors. Portland gets its name from a small island off the coast of England. The natural sandstone there would resemble the look of finished concrete. Competition and Mother Nature is what may have tipped the hand in favor of the plant to the west. The 1921 flood devastated the town of Concrete. This picture was taken of the train depot once the flood waters receded. By the 1920s, the two companies would merge and the plant in Concrete was disassembled and the town would start to die. But at that time, most everything was closed up and gone. Karen Javernick of Canyon City would attend the concrete school in the mid-1950s. The school was one of the last things left near concrete when she was in sixth grade. The concrete school used to sit right here on this corner. Um, like I said, it's a two, it was a two-room school. We lived further on down, maybe three miles, and my dad was actually the bus driver, and he would bring us and drop us off, and then on into Florence and drop off the high schoolers. While the town of Concrete had nearly died, the nearby town of Portland continued to boom. There were already 120 homes in Portland by 1920. It also had its own school and stores and medical clinics. After World War II, company towns across the U.S. were disappearing and Portland would follow suit. In the back that's strong, you load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. By 1955, there were still 45 active Portland phone numbers in the local directory. Ironically, when the Arkansas River flooded again in 1965, it would spell the beginning of the end for the rest of the town. Only a handful of homes would survive to the 70s. The last would be sold or torn down by the time the 80s rolled around. The big plant would remain. The Colorado Portland cement plant would become Portland Ideal Basic. In the mid-1980s, Swiss cement manufacturer Holnum would buy out the operations. By 2001, there was a new plant and a new name. Wholesome. The company would merge again in 2015, this time with French cement manufacturer Lafarge to become Lafarge Wholesome. The local plant in Quarry still employs 125 people today and has the capacity to produce 1.8 million metric tons of cement per year. The plant powers on, but the towns are long gone. The decorative street lights would line the streets of Portland in 1920. Fast forward 50 years and there were fewer and fewer by the 1970s. Go forward another 50 years and a drive through Portland today in 2020. And there are only two to mark where the town once stood. If you drove your Ford through concrete in 1920 on the old State Highway 6, you would have seen a busy industrial town on the banks of the Arkansas River. If you drove your Ford on Highway 120 in the same area today, the only things that are left are the ghosts of concrete. That's another edition of Throwback Thursday. Thanks to the Florence Pioneer Museum, the Royal Gorge Museum and Regional History Center, and Karen Javernick. 
for keeping the memories alive. I'm Chris Jenkins. Thank you.